Hi, this is Kmod. This is a continuation of a presentation in income statement relating to financial accounting N4 for the question paper which was written on the 10th of June 2016. For ease of reference, I'd like to refer to this presentation as part 2 of 3.1. I'm going to deal with the income statement. However, I'm specifically going to focus on the determination of other income. I'm hoping that at the end of the presentation, candidates will be able to draft the income statement and therefore they will be able to determine uh, other income items and they will be able to perform calculations relating to other income adjustments. Without wasting your time, I quickly want to take you to the question paper. There you go. Remember, we're going to focus on the nominal section and I'm particularly interested in other income. I recommend that you focus on the credit side of the nominal section to identify other income. Firstly, sales has been taken into account. I'm not going to take sales into account. Let me quickly highlight that in green just to indicate that we've taken sales into account. That um, amount was taken into account in determining the cost of sales. Rent income, we're going to take rent income into account. That's my first item that will be reflected under other income. I'm going to copy that item and I'm going to paste it to my income statement. So basically go copy, I'm going to paste it there. I quickly need to write that we're dealing with other income. Remember we add other income, other income. Let's quickly go identify other items. Other items that are given uh, discount received is an amount of 800. I'm going to take the description and I'm going to copy and paste. There you go. Let's quickly deal with descriptions and then we'll deal with calculations at a later stage. The last item under your creators, let me quickly scroll down. Indeed, it is the last item relates to interest on fixed deposit. I'm going to copy the description and I'm going to take it to other income. It's always important that you ensure that there aren't any uh, other income amounts uh, attributable to adjustments and additional information. I've already gone through all these adjustments, remember in the last presentation, and I don't think there were any new um, items that we should take into account, except that there was information in calculating some of the other income amounts. Okay, without wasting your time, let's quickly go identify those. It's, uh, that does not relate to um, our other income, the transaction not, not. I'll quickly take you to the transaction so that I save you time. So the first item is we specifically told to adjust the interest on the fixed deposit. There are various ways to calculate this, but I'm going to recommend one of the ways and please it's, it's your duty to find out the most preferable um, technique you want to employ in determining the interest on fixed deposit. We specifically told that the interest on fixed deposit at the moment is 7,800. Um, if you look at the balance sheet section, the interest on deposit will be calculated by taking the capital portion of 145,000 and multiplying by the 12%. Uh, percent. If you do that, you will arrive at an annual amount. Now you need to, co to compare the annual amount with the amount that is provided on the um, trial balance. So essentially what I'm saying is I'm going to do a calculation. Allow me to do a calculation so that you can follow. Remember it's that, I'm going to say equals to, I remember the capital portion was 145,000 rands. I'm going to multiply that by 12% per annum. I'm going to arrive at a value of 17, 1400. I'm going to compare that value with the one that is provided on the nominal section. We given the interest of 7,800. I'm going to compare that value with that amount. Um, essentially, we're supposed to account for 17,400 on an annual basis. We've only accounted for 7,800. Therefore, um, the value that we're going to take for interest on fixed deposit, it's exactly that amount. So I'm not going to do any other calculations. I think that calculation is acceptable. Moving along swiftly. 
let's go see whether there are any transactions remember we just dealt with the with transaction number seven specifically relating to the calculation of interest on fixed deposit i'm going to highlight that number eight it doesn't affect our calculations number seven certainly number seven affects our calculations but before i even go to number seven i just quickly want to check whether there's anything that affects uh, the determination of other income nothing else remember we had an easy mark let's go and that easy mark it's discount received i'm going to copy and paste because there aren't any transactions specifically affecting that item so i'm going to copy and i'm going to paste it there remember for us to arrive there, to the total of other income we're going to take a sum of those cells there you go enter eighteen thousand two hundred. but we still have to determine the rent income let's go, quickly go determine the rent income that's the last item we're doing on this presentation rent income i'm quickly gonna go to transaction number seven i want to highlight it in green there you go so we specifically told that we specifically told that um rent has been received until uh, 31st of march 2015 our year of assess uh, our current financial year ends on the 28th of february 2015 so from 1 march that's the commencement of our, our current year 1 march 2014 until 28 february 2015 will be 12 months that that's our 12 months that's how we obtain our 12 months however rent has been paid until 31st of march 2015 so essentially rent has been paid for 13 months and we only want rent for for 12 months but there's a complication if you refer to that note there's a complication in the sense that we cannot take the amount of 120 and divide by 13 in order to determine the monthly amount because remember the the rental income was not always the same for all the months it changed in the month of 1st of january 2015 it increased by a thousand and subsequent to that 1 january 2015 um february as well 2015 and march as well 2015 the amount was uh, increased by a thousand i'm quickly going to take you to the spreadsheet where we're going to perform calculations let's find the spreadsheet there you go so essentially what happens is we're going to take the amount as per the trial balance that's that i'm 120 000. and we're going to reduce by the increment so that we can arrive at an annual rental that we can divide by 13 in order to to determine the monthly amount so we're going to take as per the trial balance we're going to deduct a thousand remember the increment in total was three thousand which is made of the thousand in january 2015 a thousand in february 2015 and a thousand in march apologies that should read march and a thousand in march uh, 2015 it will come to an amount of one 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 seven triple zero we're going to take that amount it's an annual figure we're going to divide it by 13 because it relates to 13 months to arrive at a monthly figure of nine thousand once that is done we're going to determine the amount that we're going to take to the income statement we're simply going to take the rent income of uh, nine thousand that's on a monthly basis and we're going to multiply by 12 months because we only want to reflect the 12 months um, rent income we're going to arrive at an amount of 108 triple zero remember um the month of january and february which we should take into account in determining our rent income for the current financial year uh, had increased by a thousand so that's an increase that is attributable to the month of january it was a thousand and the increase attributable to the month of february it was a, th a thousand as well so our total rental income that should be taken to the income statement it's in an amount of hundred and ten thousand so it's one 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 zero triple zero i'm missing a zero there i'm not sure if i can insert it apologies there you go so we're supposed to have a zero right there so you're going to take the 108 remember how we determine the 108 9000 which is equal for all months on a monthly basis we multiply that by 12 remember um january had increased by a thousand 
meaning that January was 10,000 and February was, was also 10,000. So we determined uh, the 12 months by multiplying by nine and then we're going to factor in the increment specifically for January and February. We're not going to take much into account because much is after our current financial year. Let's quickly go do the update in the income statement. So I'm simply going to take the 110 and put it there. One, one, zero, one, two, three. There you go. Now we're going to have what we call gross income. So gross income is determined by taking your gross profit and adding your other income. So I'm just simply going to say some of those two cells. There you go. This is what I'd like to end. Next presentation, I'm going to deal with operating expenses. Thank you.